Yeah, all right. Uh, intros, yeah. Um, nothing, uh, nothing people love more. Uh, fuck. Whew. All right, gotta get pumped for this. Gotta get pumped. Nothing people love more. Nothing people love more. Nothing people love more. Um, let's see. Uh, fuck. Nothing people love more. Um, let's see. Uh, fucking judging me here. Um, there's nothing that people love more than control. We, we want control over our lives, over, over that cute girl from Subway that winked at us. We, we want control in all aspects of our life. And this holds true most to the magician. We're a, we're a sad bunch of people. We want control over everything. We use magic to, to facilitate social conversations. So we're the one that need control the most. So today I'm going to show you how to do controls that will help you in your life's quest to control as many things as you possibly can. And what other uh, tool can we best practice our controls on but the humble deck of cards so uh, I'm gonna show you a uh, hot control and, and people love top lists fuck it so this is gonna be a top three three and a half uh, controls uh, that are easy and you should be able to to get down so here here it is um, so the first one and before anything uh, you're gonna need to know how to get a pinky break. Now, a pinky break is one of the most overutilized and over f fucked up t technique in magic because most pinky breaks require the insertion of the pinky all the way in uh, to the deck. They require the insertion of the pinky there, and that's unnecessary. This isn't middle school prom. You don't need to stick it all the way in you just need to have a little bit of little bit of a, of a flesh in it so you, i've mentioned this before but you just need the flesh of the pinky to be in there so let's assume that we're spreading the deck and we have a card selected right uh, so this card is going to be the 10 the 10 of clubs here uh, so this card is going to be you're going to spread the deck again you're going to repab them replace the card here now as you're squaring the deck up what's happening is that these fingers over here are allowing the surface of the cards to rub up against it. Again, like a middle school prom, you are letting the surface rub up against uh, these digits over here. What that's gonna do is that that's gonna create a little bit of a mess situation here. Now this is an exaggerated, uh, exaggerated block there, um, but you don't want that many, you don't want it to be that large. But even if it is that large, you notice that from the front, it's not necessarily noticeable because the cards are all and every single way. What this allows you to do is to be hands off when it comes to controlling the cards. Right now, I'm not holding any sort of break. The only thing that's happening is I'm letting the messed up situation of the cards be my, my guide here, be my Jiminy, my Jiminy Cricket. So this is a, a nice little subtlety I learned from one, one of the uh, Daryl tapes, uh, RIP, uh, RIP OG niggas. So, What's happening again is that as you are spreading, uh, we'll use the king of diamonds here, as you are closing up the spread, you're letting your fingers have a little bit of friction there, which uh, creates a, a step that you're gonna take advantage of because again, you could be very hands off. If you want, you could even drop this on the table. You could drop it on the table. Why? Because the break exists there. So you're gonna be able to, to separate the cards uh, fairly easily. So that's the first technique here that I want to teach even before talking about controls because in, in that aspect and by very definition, I'm controlling the card right now. I'm exerting my control over that card uh, like, a, like a little bitch because of uh, this technique here. And again, it allows you to be very hands off. So when it comes to the pinky break and when you want to establish the pinky break, right now my excuse for my hand reaching over here is to square up the deck, obviously. So I could gesture and say, you know what? You picked the card very fairly, sir. And now as, as uh, I regrip the deck, my fingers are contacting this little step. And as I'm scoring the deck in, all that's gonna happen is that I'm gonna allow that break to 
encompass the little fleshy part of my pinky. Again, my whole pinky is not in there. That's the important part. You don't want your whole pinky in there. All you want is the fleshy part of your pinky to separate the halves there. So what's happening now is that that pinky is keeping a break over the card that they picked here. In this case, it's gonna be the four spades. So my, just to flush my pinky, I'm putting pressure with my thumb as to kind of close the gap as much as possible in the front. Uh, another noticeable issue that I see by a, a lot of magicians is that because they have the, uh, the, the high school prom break here, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be very noticeable in the front that you are in fact controlling the card. But if you have just the flesh of your pinky in there, and you're putting pressure with your thumb, you're not gonna see anything from the front, uh, especially if it's a normal uh, regulation style playing cards. So that's that's the first hot tip here. You're, you're putting pressure with the thumb and it's only the flesh of the pinky. Even that's a little bit exaggerated, by the way. This is obviously uh, exaggerated. So I just, you know, you wanna put a little bit of pressure to keep that gap as close as possible. So it, you could refer to it as an anti thought break because the gap is, is, is small. Thoughties, the gap is big. Uh, for this, the gap is, is small. So, you, you know, keep that, keep that in mind. So now that we've uh, used our pinkies as, as, uh, as hard as possible, how do we control the card? Well, here we have a couple different options. The one that gets the most flack from magicians is the double undercut. However, for my personal uh, preference here, my personal orientation, I would have to say I'm a double undercut sexual because uh, I like the double undercut. So what the double undercut is, is you're going to pretty much do a couple moves here at the same time. You're going to transfer the break from the pinky to the thumb. Now this sounds very difficult. I don't want you to get your, your panties in a bunch. This is a fairly easy thing to do. All you're going to do is bring your right hand over that's this hand over here. You're gonna bring your right hand over and grip the deck. And in picking up the deck, you're not really doing much. You're just gonna transfer the deck, still holding that break. You're gonna hold it with your right hand. What that does is that the break naturally transfers to the, to the right hand here. All by just picking up the deck, the break remains there. I don't have to do much work. Now again, how you hide that break is what separates a good magician from a, a better, a better magician is how you hide that break. So obviously, you don't just wanna hold that break for too long. Uh, so a couple hot tips here. Now there are techniques, uh, wedge break techniques, and there are other ways to hide this, but just the, the easiest thing that you could do is just put a little bit of pressure with your forefinger. Uh, put the same amount of pressure that your father did uh, to push you to perform on your entrance exam for college uh, if you are Asian. Put that much pressure and that's how much pressure you want to put. So you're putting a little bit of pressure there, which is going to close the gap here. And you're not going to be holding this position for long. So the double undercut, what's going to happen is that you're just going to transfer the cards to the thumb break. You're going to grab half the cards underneath the break here and bring them to the top of the deck, then grab the other half and bring that on top of the deck. And that's, that's it. Uh, it. It doesn't get much complicated than that. Now, what I do see often is people doing this sort of action. Uh, this sort of action, this reaching in um, sort of thing. Uh, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, again, the, the point is to make it look like you're just cutting the deck. So it should look like a, like a natural thing. There's a, a Juan Tamaris bit that I don't think he's gone over, but I've seen him in performance uh, when he does this. He kind of scrapes under like this to make it more of a spread mess. He's still holding a break, but he scrapes underneath the deck here to make it look more messy than it actually is, but that's accomplishing the same thing. That's a hot, a hot tip for, for y'all. Uh, so that's, that's the double undercut. Again, very uh, magicians tend not to like it. I am a double undercut sexual. So because of that, um, I have to say I voted yes on it. I enjoy the move. And if you don't, you could go fuck yourself. So uh, those, are, those are already two hot things. Let's go for the, uh, the next one. The next one is one that I've again mentioned in many videos, but it's one that I think is very underutilized in the magic world, and it is the Mahatma control here. So this is uh, this is from Tom Malika again, RIP, OG nigga, all, all great magicians are, are dying slowly all around us. So that's another one that deserves all the, all the recognition. Um, so pretty much for this one, you're doing the same thing. You're getting a break 
uh, underneath, sorry, above the uh, the card here. So it's a two of diamonds. You're getting a break. Um, we'll, we'll use another card here because I lost a break in explanation because I am a gay cunt. So uh, you have a break here. Now what's going to happen for this Mahatma control is you're going to pretty much approximate an overhand shuffle. And the way you're going to do that is by reaching over, grabbing all the cards above the break. So right now their card is over here. You're going to swivel everything towards the right here. And you're going to get off in an overhand shuffle. So you're just going to use your left thumb here, your left thumb here to just scrape off cards like an overhand shuffle. And what that does is that it very nonchalantly brings their card to the top of the deck in the pretext of an overhand shuffle here. It's a very underutilized, but very simple and easy control that doesn't really look like you're doing much. It doesn't look like a control. It looks like you're shuffling the cards. Now, if you want to keep shuffling, you're going to have to put pressure with these fingers and the thumb so that that card stays on the top, assuming that their card is not a jack of diamonds, so that you could continue shuffling and uh, not have to do something weird. So that, that's the uh, milk shuffle there. So this is some hot tips. Even if you're an advanced magician, uh, hot hot tips here. So that's uh, that's the other control here, the Mahatma shuffle. And then the other one that's kind of underutilized uh, that I really don't see used much is the uh, riffle shuffle control here. So what's more common than a, a spectator shuffling cards like this and then doing a, a, an awful bridge. Um, so that's that's there's nothing more common than that other than uh, herpes. Um, so this is, uh, you wanna take advantage of that and make it as natural as possible. So why not use a riffle shuffle here? So you, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna have a card selected, in this case, it's the Joker. You're gonna establish the break. You could gesture however you want, but ultimately you get a pinky break right there. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna transfer to the thumb and the thumb is gonna put way more pressure this time. You're gonna put way more pressure with the forefinger because you're gonna riffle up the side here like you would normally. Uh, you're gonna riffle up to yourself here until you reach that break. When you reach that break, that is where you're gonna break the deck and start the overhand, uh, sorry, the riffle shuffle here. So obviously you're gonna be riffle shuffling the cards all up until you get to their card. Now here's a, a Bill Malone tip that I've seen uh, him use before. So what's gonna happen is that instead of letting their card uh, run last, so now their card is on top of the deck, which is uh, the Joker in this case, you want to shuffle one card, one or two cards above this Joker. So now the Joker is second from the top. So what you're gonna do now to get that, that Joker to the top is you're going to uh, seem like you're just burning cards here. So you're gonna grab one card from the bottom and stick it in the middle and then grab the top card and stick it in the middle and do this kind of messy. So now their Joker's on top and all it looks like you've done is just burned a couple cards. So here's, uh, here's how that looks like in practice. You're pretty much shuffling the cards, making it look messy, uh, but really their card is on top of the deck now, all in, all in a riffle shuffle action here. So if you want, you could shuffle two cards on top of their card here uh, to make it look even messier. So you could shuffle two cards to make it look like you really don't care and you're just mixing the cards up and, and burning cards as it goes. But that's, a, that's another, uh, another one that I don't see very often. And it's a, a very good technique, especially if you want to look as natural as possible. The one thing you don't want to do that I've mentioned before is you don't want to break off into a Sybil routine. So, you know, you, you shuffle the cards in the deck and I've seen this done way too often that, uh, that that's your control right there. That's how you control the card to the top. Oh yeah, uh, sir, uh, did you select a card? Yes, it's the 10 of clubs. All right, uh, well, let me just control it to the top. Here's my favorite one that I see people using. That's, uh, so your card is lost in the deck now, sir. Your card is lost in the deck now, sir. And that, and, and you know, you look like uh, you don't know what you're doing. So that's, uh, you wanna avoid those. You wanna make your controls look as natural as possible. So those are uh, three and a half controls uh, that you could use to uh, impress your friends and family with your ability to con control playing cards. Uh, I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you practice them. I hope you uh, do all the things that people do on YouTube videos and uh, check out the Patreon, check out the t-shirt um, and, and do magic more, do more magic, do more magic. Do more magic. Do more magic. Do, do more magic. See you again when I see you again. When I see you again. When I see.